Hey guys, Mustache Tom here, and welcome to my review of System Shock. So, I was provided this via a PayPal supporter. Once again, thanks for the support. I wish I had more PayPal supporters, but hey, it is what it is. I'll take what I can get. And boy, was this a video game. So, as per usual, since I can, I'll be going over the story and gameplay a little bit separately here. And viewing them as objectively as possible, and giving them separate scores respectfully. So first, the story. So the story is on the more relatively simpler side, which does make sense. Uh, this is a remake of a game that was on the more vintage side of video games when they had less and less stories back then. So it makes sense that that would hold up, but the story that we do get is a hacker. Uh, sex of your choice, either male or female, that being, and once you choose, your hacker gets arrested for ha hacking into the industry complex that you're, well, hacking into. I forget the name of it already. Point being is that you get arrested and move to that, their planet's, like, arrest planet system or whatever, and it turns out that while there, all hell, or metaphorical hell, has broken loose as an AI experimental thingamajig has taken over and wants to take over more of Earth. In the process of you being left behind, being the sole survivor, at least on this planet, that still seems to have any cognitive function. And from there, it is up to you, the player, to take control of said hacker and, well, essentially save Earth from this AI programming. And if you die, you get swept into the AI bug robot thing and all gobbledygooked inside. You can see the death animation in the Let's Play. Because I die plenty of times, especially in the beginning. But that is the story, and again, relatively simple, so I think giving it the fair shake of a 5 out of 10, you know, just sort of standard story, it's not anything particularly strong, or though I don't think necessarily anything breaks, so, you know, there's that, but, you know, it's simple, so, again, I think a 5 out of 10 is a fair score to give stories that are, again, of this simple of quality. But boy howdy, do I have a lot to talk about for the gameplay, because this is where the game completely falls apart. Let's begin. So, this is a FPS, a first person shooter. Now, by god, does this game already have a lot to live up to when it comes to FPS? One of my favorites of all time is Doom. I adore Doom. Doom and Doom 2 and, you know, Doom 3 is where it got a little bit wonky, but I still enjoyed it very much. And I'm talking about the original Doom games before it got rebooted and all that. That is a game I played as a kid, and it was challenging, and the progression, you know, the progression got a, you know, more and more challenging, but it was always fair, I felt. And that is something that is really hard to determine, though I love to use this term. It's called the level of escalation. It's not the first time I've used this term in my reviews. This is referring to how far you are in the game versus how much of the challenge is ramping up in regards to playstyle. Unfortunately, the level of escalation in this game I felt hell, you know, hit a wall. You can see the wall, because the Let's Play literally just ends at that wall. It literally is an unfinished Let's Play, so I dearly apologize for that. But by God, getting to that wall was no easy feat in itself. So first, there's the gameplay. As I mentioned, it's an FPS, and at first it does seem relatively simple to control. You hit the R2 to swing your uh, 
you know, your, your wrench or whatever weapon it was, a lead pipe or whatever starting weapon it is. Point being is that your grunt enemies are these sort of zombie-esque type mutated human type enemies that sort of slowly swing at you and do a little damage. And if you need to replenish, there is a health booth at pretty early in the game that fills you up to hit full. And there are certain weapons, one of which relies purely on an energy-based system. The system also depletes, therefore there are like recharging stations throughout the game. There are multiple of them that you can find, or at least a very few of them at any rate. But bizarrely, there only had seemed to be, at least as far as I had gotten, that one health refreshing system, the full one. But up all the way up until that first boss, there were only seeming to be these smaller health packets along the way. And one later on convenience of the rebirth system, I guess I'll call it, or whatever it's called in the game. Think of it as when you die in Elden Ring and you set your bonfire. Like that. So, you know, I'm gonna make comparisons because I know a lot of people have played Elden Ring. I would have hoped that a lot of people played Doom because that game is phenomenal. And there's another game in this game, by the way, that copies a lot from another game, I'm not gonna lie, but we'll get to that a, a little bit later. But for now, we'll focus on the FPS aspects. Now, one of the earliest issues I had noticed is that there is an inventory box. This is a feature that is commonly used in games such as Resident Evil 4. The reason I particularly mention Resident Evil 4 is the the inventory space acts like a cache taste, uh, cache, you know, case style game little mechanic thing in its own right. However, from starting point all the way to the first boss, there didn't seem to be any way to increase the size of the inventory. And maybe I didn't do enough scraping, but by God, I don't think there is. And that is an issue, let me tell you right now, because it turns out later on you get bigger guns that take up more inventory space, and soon you start to run out of ammo for those guns, and boy oh boy when that happens, and you don't have any way to get rid of your guns, or you don't... You know, you don't want to get rid of your guns because you never know if you could pick up ammo later. Then you're like, well, fuck me, I guess. Which is what happened to me. I had two big guns, the uh, the assault rifle and the laser rifle, I guess I'll call it, or goss rifle. It's not quite a goss rifle, but it's close enough. Uh, these two guns took about eight slots worth of inventory each. And the inventory outside of that could carry only so much more. Which is like two other guns being my handgun, though there are three other, sh you know, four square guns, so handgun, magnum, and plasma gun, I guess I'll call it, and melee weapon, which I had two at the time, which would be the pipe and the, the charging saber, I guess I'll call it, because I forget what it's called in the game. And the rest is, well, you just kind of have to figure out what you want in your inventory with the remaining, like, eight slots that you can fit, like, one square items into, because there's, like, no inventory space left. So it's like, okay, I guess I have to get rid of this one square item for this one or whatever. So there's that problem. Now, luckily, there are some... Uh, disposable things that you can uh, dispose your junk into and get coins. And you have to find these like beverage item assortments and pay out to get any assortment of healing item and whatever the other ones do. I never tested any of the other ones because I don't know. I didn't think that they would help. There was like a vision one that I was like, okay, that one seemed useless. There was the berserk one. Might have come in handy. I'm guessing that one does more damage, question mark. 
or maybe it makes you stronger. Again, maybe I should have tested it, I don't know. I, I got way too frustrated at that point and I had already fought thrown it thrown it at the the last possible moment before testing it, so my bad on that one personally. That's a foible on my end, and I'm willing to admit those, but still the wall. So I get to the first boss. No, and I can't even talk about the first boss yet, because there is another issue when I came across this game before getting to the first boss, as it would turn out. It turns out that as I was playing System Shock Reboot, I came across a bug. Which is something that I have had a tendency to do from time to time. Even in God of War, God of War Ragnarok, I came across a falling through the world bug. That happened, by the way. Uh, so yeah, not great. But still, the checkpoint was fair, so that wasn't... It was more funny than like, oh god, this is happening now. Unlike this game, where the bug is, you would I would get stuck in the environment. And what would begin to happen is that since you're in F FPS mode, you can look down and you can actually see your feet in the game. Now what makes this particularly bizarre is that if you try to shift left and right in this bug, the upper part of your camera shifts away from your legs. You can see this bug at minimum three times in this Let's Play, where I literally get stuck in the environment like this, and I'm trying to finagle my way out, ducking, the crouch walking, you know, any little way I can figure to get out. And luckily, the earlier times I managed to do so somehow without needing to restart the game. And usually after the bug fix, I would immediately save the game, so that way I wouldn't have to, like, you know, be stuck permanently. God, you know, <laughs> game gods above and all that. But by God, the most recent iteration of the bug, the one where you get stuck, happened again. So get this, I get in this room, you can see it uh, in the 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 video before the video before the finale, I believe it, it's in. And in this, it's like on this chair. I see this item. I I'm attempting to pick it up, but my inventory is like full. So I'm like, okay, I'll drop stuff to pick this thing up, I guess. But then I get stuck, and I'm like, fuck me! It happened again, like for the fifth time now. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing my crouch gimmick to try to get out of it this time, but it is, like, stuck stuck this time. So I'm like, fuck. I'm legit just stuck stuck stuck, aren't I? But I have a grenade, luckily. And I'm like, okay, maybe, I haven't tested this yet, maybe if I kill myself in the video game, maybe that will fix the bug, right? So I throw my grenade down, it hits the floor, and I die in the video game. And as I respawn, instead of, you know, the earlier death screen thing I talked about, I do the respawn system, I have the respawn system figured out, I'm like, okay, now the bug should be fixed. I respawned, I killed myself from when I was stuck, I look down, and what do you know, I'm still in the fucking bug and I'm freaking the fuck out going what the fuck are you kidding me did the let did the people play test this thing why would you release this with such a game breaking bug I'm sorry but this is unacceptable this is not good you guys like, I, I've i heard the class typing of bugs from watching other Let's Players that used to be game testers, and I don't know what bug class this falls under, but I would personally 
preface, it'd probably be on the higher echelon of bugs, because it prevents you from playing the game for a while, essentially. And again, I don't even know if it could have completely gotten me stuck permanently, so it could be an even worse bug for all I know. But to resurrect, and to think that the bug would be fixed only for it to follow me through its resurrection, is like, come on. You had to have tested for this. You have had to have tested for environmental bullshit. Cause, let's players like to explore. I don't know if the, the creators know this, but the players love to fuck around in the environment and explore. I'm a little explorer, as it would turn out myself, but by god, I got stuck in the environment, and now I am paying for it as I resurrect, still stuck in the resurrection booth, trying to bell that I'm out of grenades, by the way, because I only had the one, trying to wiggle my way out, and, you know, whew, I managed to find a way, again, I don't even know how I undo it, but I undo it nonetheless, and I'm like, save, 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 because, you know, you know, who knows, again, I don't, that I could get past this. So there's the bug that I encountered, again, like five times at the very most, I, I think, if I recollect my number count, but I could be wrong. Anyway, point being, we get to the wall. And as far as I am aware, this is the first boss I encounter. The first boss. I don't know if there's more than one boss, but fuck me. I guess I will never know, because I couldn't for the life of me get past this boss. I would estimate, based on the amount of times I've died and how fast I died, this guy can kill you, the player, with any minimum strikes of three swipes. And he's really, really fast on top of that. Now, I can't believe I have to bring back Elden Ring, but I'm going to. Like, okay, I love Elden Ring. I really do. It has its spawn points that stay consistent, which is a godsend, because those battles are, you know, absolute game stoppers that absolute require focus and absolutely require a level of skill. That is not to be underestimated in Elden Ring by any regard. And boy howdy was that more known, you know, the most noticeable in the Melania fight. And I'm pretty sure I said her name wrong, but y you know who I'm talking about. The lady with the super jump swing of death. And sure, there have been players that have found exploits, and that's all funny and, you know, again, let's players do what let's players do. They figure this weird shit out. You know, and I'm over here trying to fight her as conceivably fair as possible, and I'm... But I'm still desperate and new enough to that I have no shame in using summons because it's my first, you know, virgin experience in the world of uh, souls. Like so, I'm like, okay, I'll I'll give in to the 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 cuckery of uh, summoning. Apparently, that is the the baby way of playing the game. But whatever, I don't give a fuck. Anywho, even with the assistance. That boss is still a boss, as far as I'm concerned. She still can slay you pretty quickly, if you're not careful. Especially with that super swing. And, like, I eventually figured it out the first time. And when it came to prepping for the DLC, I got back up to her, by the way. All the way back up to her. And I forgot... She had that move, and I forgot she healed, too, because it had been a while since the DLC. But, yeah, like, I completely fell right back into not being able to defeat her. I used to, you know, I beat the game. You can see the Let's Play, I beat it. Finale and all. But the DLC is here, so new challenges await. Review and pending for Elden Ring for further, you know, inspection. But, for the time being, this boss... 
again, kills you in three swipes. But get this. When I die, I am not treated to the resurrection that I have come accustomed to after the long dreaded one where I have to reload back to my save. So I have to learn that I have to save a lot more constantly in the game. You see that in my Let's Play, I, I start to figure out, oh, this is definitely a more old school game. We probably have to save a bit more. The deaths are more occurring. Okay, fine. I'll save a lot more often. You'll see that in the Let's Play. That is fine. However, when I unlock the Rebirth system, I'm like, okay, that's fine. It's a little, still a little bit of annoying trek because I know that it doesn't heal you full way, which I think it ought to at, at the bare minimum, for God's sake. And because then it would allow you to avoid having to backtrack if you want the full heal to the only bed I am aware of again. Per, you know, gripes aside. But the gripes do not end, unfortunately. As instead of being treated to the rebirth cycle, I am treated to the original death screen. And I have to reload the save. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? So I go all the way back. It's a long fucking trek, to, by the way, to this resurrection system alone. on Because it's all one floor, but it's pretty lengthy. And I go all the way back there and I check it and I'm like... I turn it off, I, I literally do the thing, I turn it off, and then I check, and then I turn it back on, and I check. I did that. I did that, I turned it off, I checked, I get the original death screen, I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. I go back, I turn it back on, I go back to the boss, I die, and I still get the original death screen, and I have to reload the save again. What? the fuck? What is this? This is unacceptable load save systems if I've ever seen it. This is unacceptable. Not even Elden Ring is this unfair. Elden Ring, a game that punishes you for not being good enough, as, it, as the, the experts of Elden Ring would like to put it. You don't even get that. Fuck you, I guess. No, not even. So yeah, there's all that. Now, I told you at the at some earlier junction that there is another gameplay section that is unlike that. And for those who are unfamiliar, it's another old game. It's definitely another one of my favorites. And as soon as I saw it, it immediately clicked. I'm like, oh fuck, this is fucking Descent, let's go! And I was elated at something that looked like Descent and played like Descent. I was like, fuck yeah, I love me Descent. It's one of my favorite classic games of flying the little ship and shooting shit. I love the game, my god. But by god, that game, it had a pretty slapping OST. Just gonna throw that out there. If you're looking for some good classic OSTs, I would highly recommend looking into the, the Descent soundtrack. When I was a kid, because this game's old, I used to literally dance to the game. I literally made up a song to one of the, the, so, the you know, because the songs are just like, they're just like beats. They don't have any lyrics. But back in the day, when I was a kid listening to one of the songs, and I started singing this pajama song, and something about wearing pajamas. I don't remember the exact lyrics that I came up with, but I did it to the beat of the song when I was a kid, cause I, and I was dancing around, and that was me just goofing off as a kid, and having a grand old time, and boy were those the good old days, I guess. And I was like, yeah, okay, Descent, that's a fun game. Turns out the, the musical OST here is a little bit too soft for my liking. It's not, it doesn't have that butt rock feel that the original Descent sort of had a little bit of, or a lot of. It's 
you know, whatever slider you depend on on the rock function, I guess. But the music was still really memorable. And I don't know, like, to me, an OST can carry quite a lot for a video game sometimes. And to be fair, Descent is still a pretty fun game without it. And this game, at least the first few levels, are fine. Like the rest of the game, it started to swarm me with enemies, and that took a little bit more getting used to, but I was a, I was a Descent expert. So I was like, okay, I need to clearly be moving around a lot more, and with a lot more moving space in those environments, it's like, okay, I can do that. So I, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a little bit annoyed, a lot less annoyed, dare I say, because there's not as much management in this regard. There's no inventory management. You get infinite bullets. <laughs> Solve that problem. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Fine, I can just, you know, sort of shift around in the battlefield of this uh, descent looking game. And sure enough, I got through the hordes of enemies after a few tries. And hey, for what it worth, again, a lot less annoying, but you know, it was starting to aggravate, and not even gonna lie, but hey, still I would stay, you know, if I'm being as objective as possible, I will still say I think that was still fair enough. I do think so. The level of escalation was a bit pushing it, I will argue, because that was, that was the third one I think I found. Only three to get that high? This game is real. I, I'm assuming I was sort of halfway, because I started to look up shit. Because I was getting lost, by the way, on top of all of this. Um, I think I was. I got to the close to the halfway point. Question mark. But then again, the boss came, and I did not have any ammo for my assault rifle. I'm like, fuck. I don't have any ammo for my Gauss rifle slash laser rifle. Fuck. I only have the Magnum. And I'm shooting him, so I'm like, okay, maybe the Magnum will do it in. I shoot him like eight times, or at least attempt to, but he kills me in three swings, and he's insanely fast. So, yeah. Didn't get it done. Let's leave it at that. So, there are two different gameplay games in this game, and then there are the other puzzles that you have to sort of finagle around, and those are fine. Though, I will also argue that during your puzzles, I figured this one out really early on, you can get interrupted during them. Fuck me, I guess. You can't even do puzzles in peace. Which is something that I don't even think Resident Evil allows to happen. If I remember correctly, they pause the enemies for you to solve the puzzles, and even that get those games. So I'm like, fuck me, like, come on, give me, give me a break to focus on the new thing that you're putting in front of me, game. You know. So there's that on top of everything I mentioned. So in terms of gameplay score, if I were to look at everything, the bug in the wall being its two highest detriments to this game. And also considering the, the semi-acceptable gameplay of the other portion, the descent portion of the game, I think I'm still going to have to give this game a 3 out of 10 at highest. I probably may push it to 4, but that's the extent that I would dare go to, because that, those halts in the game are just absolutely unacceptable for a game, for especially a remake. Like, there have been too many remakes at this point that have been absolute bangers for this one to come along and be in the shape that it's in. This is unacceptable. Like, when you have, when you you know, are up against a remake like Resident Evil 4 Remake, you have to bring your A-game to being a remake. I'm sorry. That is just the way it is now. That is the standard 
as far as I am concerned, of being a remake. You have to be on that level. You have to be as good as the original and also bringing that new stuff in, which is exactly what Resident Evil 4 Remake did. So System Shock Remake did not do that. It clearly didn't. It has a clearly obvious bug that clearly needs fixing. I'd probably reassess that it does need to have some level of balance in its management of inventory at the very minimum, too. Cause yeah, even in Resident Evil, when you begin to run out of ammo, and I noticed this in Resident Evil 4, cause I played it a bunch, I've beaten that game like four or five times at this point, I probably say I know every in and out of Resident Evil 4 at this juncture. When you run low on ammo, say when you kill an enemy, it the game, you know, its systems recognize that you are low on ammo, so the enemy is not only way more likely to drop ammo, but to drop more ammo for you, or, you know, the essentials to build ammo anyway. So ammo. So yeah, the game's got you covered even when you think you're at your low points. Enough to where you can finish the game. Here, that's never even a thing. There's no system as far as I'm aware that's like, hey, you're running low on ammo, let's, you know, boost you back up just in case you were, you know, on the little low, extreme low end here. Nope. Turns out enemies don't drop nothing. You have to look for the ammo yourselves. And the ammo is sparse. And sometimes you pick up the ammo that you don't have a gun for, which is something I ended up doing pretty early on, I guess. I might have picked up ammo for a shotgun, I think. I don't know. The bullet name to gun name is very confusing. Like, there's an ammo type called Dragon something. I'm like, what gun does that belong to? I don't have a gun that's called Dragon something. What do you mean? So, it's like, come on. Even as simple as naming your ammo, like handgun bullets, shotgun shells, or whatever. Uh, the other name, if it's not shells, whatever. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not a gun expert per se, but still, like, you can do better than this naming convention. You can do so much better and make it a little bit more like, oh, there's an easy ammo inventory box or something. I don't know. Fuck, an inventory box. Resident Evil has that. An inventory box. I think there's, like, a system where you can, like, haul your ammo or inventory up or down, but that's not an inventory box, per se. I, I don't think it functions exactly the same. It might. But the problem with that seems to be is that your box in Resident Evil, as far as I remember it, is infinite. Like, the space that's allotted in your box is infinite, if I remember that correctly. Your inventory inventory is not, so, you know, you can store whatever you need to in your box inventory, as much as you need in there. This game has a fixed inventory box, so you can only send certain amount of shit at a time. And it's like, why? Come on. You... I don't know what else to say. There are way too many remakes, again, that have come out that far surpass this game. And there are far too many classic games, Doom, Descent, to look at this game and say that it is a game of quality. And there are too many remakes, like Resident Evil 4, and uh, there was the other one, the, the other horror one I can't remember the name of, and I'm sorry, I haven't played it yet either. Um... So I um, apologize for blanking, but point being, like, the level, this does not work on both accounts. This does not live up to a remake, certainly not, and 
if this is what anything of what the classic was, boy, must that classic must have been a bullshit game too. Huh, <sighs> what a wreck. But that is my review of System Shock. If you ended up enjoying it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. Second so to my PayPal, we can help support me and my channel directly. And third to my Discord server, we can join chill for free and all of that cool stuff. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye.